Hey, what's happening, everybody? And welcome back to Investment Perspectives. Uh, today, I want to talk about um, liquidity. And I want to talk about where we've mentioned before in videos that uh, I've suggested that there may need to be a price adjustment for XRP. So, all right, so that's going to be the theme today is liquidity and the talk of price adjustment. Before we get into that, I want to say thank you to everybody. We've just been growing at an astronomical rate, and I can't tell you how much I'm really grateful for every single one of you hitting the like and subscribe, and even more importantly, leaving comments so we can have a great dialogue. It's it's just, it's been the, just a really, I mean, just unexpected, but just a, a, a lot of fun. I can't, I can't even tell you how much this has just energized me. Um, you know, I've, al I've always been addicted to it, and now to have this ability to talk with you guys is just really special. So thank you to each and every one of you. Um, yesterday, in the video we did yesterday, huge shout out to WB, Chinese Bamboo. Thank you, brother. He sent a lot of the information to me that we talked about. In fact, all of the information that I share with you, he sent the PDF files of the U.S. Uh, bills that were on the House of Representatives uh, floor. You can look at those in the comments under that video or on my Twitter. And you can follow me at uh, Backup Bradley. And it's Backup, B-A-K-K-U-P, Bradley, L-E-Y, no spaces. And you can follow me on Twitter. You can find the information there as well as in the comments of the previous video on the U.S. bills and U.S. laws. So thank you again, WB. Big shout out to you. Really appreciate you. Keep that stuff coming, brother. You know, if we can get it in, we're going to get it in. Um, so today, I want to go a little further. We know that regulations are, are being worked on right now. We know that they've been sculpted in this stuff for a long time. But the time to pull the curtain back is coming, and it's nearing ever so close. So we know that now. The stuff's on the floor. We're seeing it all roll out. I want to go and talk more about – I saw some stuff on Twitter where people were talking. I think it was Dr. T and some others. They were mentioning and referencing liquidity and the liquidity issue and the questions that are there. And there's a lot of them. But I want to talk about it today, and I want to talk about it from the perspective of the ripple drop that recently came out. I believe it was on December 7th, and it had Miguel Viez, who is the, as we know, the former head of the CME Group. And we know that the CME Group is an investor within uh, Ripple and what they're doing. So let's talk about that. He discusses a lot of the, the liquidity issue on there in that ripple drop. And I want to break some of that down and I'm going to pretty much use pretty much verbatim what he said, but just for us to take it in. This is new terminologies, new way to hear things being said. You understand macro ideas of certain terms, but you might not know the exact specific way that it actually is being meant. Let's see if we can't clear some of that up today and bring a real, real images to some of this stuff. So Okay, so he talks about, he asked the question, what is liquidity? And then he says, liquidity means you can move value through XRP in and out of it without necessarily affecting the overall price of XRP. Excellent. And then he, talk, and then he says, um, you know, he even elaborates further, you can get in and get out without having a major impact on major market shifts happening. So that's, that's it right there. So liquidity is like a pool and it's like that neighborhood pool you can go swim in it whenever you need to and there's always going to be the water you need in that pool right that's important to remember because we're going to talk about that again now he starts giving examples and he gives an examples of the forex market the currency trading market right global currencies paired against each other they're traded every day for the spreads it's quite an analogy so then he gets into it and he says, let's take a look at the Forex market. The driving force of liquidity is not speculation. Well, we're the speculators in our market. Okay, so that's us. He's talking about us. So even though we are the current drivers of XRP right now, ultimately the goal is that we will not be the driving force 
we may be a force, and we've been told by Dilip Rao here, and we've had comments that we found from David Schwartz that suggest they see a broad market of retail and institution all being, you know, in a, in a market together. We have yet to see that definitively through the laws and the rules, but that is where the signaling shows us. So when he says the driving force of liquidity is not speculation, he's saying that we're not going to be the driving force. It doesn't mean we won't be a force, but those U.S., I mean, I'm sorry, but the retail holders, wherever you are, that's us. So buyers, sellers, holders, that's us. Then he goes on to say, it's not liquidity provision by market participants. Now, this is very, very, very important, this part right here. I'm going to say it again. He says it's not liquidity provision by market participants. So what does that mean? Market participants are Bank A, Bank B. They're doing millions, billions. You make the number up. It doesn't matter. They're participants. The payments that they're going to swap back and forth are going to happen within three to four seconds. The liquidity provision... It's not from the, or by the market participants, okay? These are the participants that came to the neighborhood pool to go swim and make the payment. And they always need to know when they come up to the pool that there's enough water in the pool for however long they want to swim or however many friends they want to bring along to swim with them. This is important, guys. It's the use. He goes on to say, it is the use of that liquidity by real businesses. There you go. And here you go. I'm going to go ahead and say it right here because I firmly believe this is where our new, value, our new valuation of XRP will come from. They're building the relationships. This has been a global effort. The partnerships, I mean, excuse me, are there they absolutely have said they've got more than 200. We know they're dealing with central banks. We hear the rattling of the IMF just talking about digital currencies. You see the legislation that's on the floor of the United States House of Representatives. It's going to be voted on soon. They don't have time. They have less time than we do. The economy is in a terrible place. The Triffin dilemma is a real issue for the U.S. dollar. There is an issue of that impending crisis and the, what is happening to that dollar and how it affects everyone else's dollar in the world. They have less time than we do. It's just a thought, but it's true. And I'm going to tell you, when he says it's the use of liquidity by real businesses. So let me run through this and recap what he breaks down. He says the example he gives is let's look at the FX market. That's currency trading. Then he goes, the driving force of liquidity is not speculation. It's not the liquidity provision by market participants. It's the use of that liquidity by real businesses. Okay? Now, broke that down. So now let me get on to this. He gives a further example. Let's take an automaker in Japan who receives euros every day, and they need to swap that for yen. He's making the example I just gave you. So they're in the market regardless of whether the market is up or down. It doesn't matter. They need to swap that stuff every day, right? So when they need to swap it and use that payment rail and that switch for that three or four seconds, they need to be able to walk up to the pool and know that there's water in the pool, which means it really suggests, because he goes on to say too, projects like Omni, Coil, and X Rapid will use liquidity from XRP. These different uh, projects uh, will end up driving up liquidity, right? That suggests to me because they will be able to put a valuation on XRP based on the enormous amount of partnerships and different projects that are going to be launched on top of it to source the liquidity from XRP. Okay, so he says, as the volume grows with use case utility, the higher the price XRP, the tighter the spreads. We've all heard that, but 
this will make it very stable uh, liquidity pool for market participants. Okay, I think a lot of people believe that we have such partnerships, they think the payment flows themselves will be what causes the price to go up. It will, but not in that direct manner how I understand it. How I understand it is, is that the valuation of the enormous amount of partnerships, because let's keep in mind, it isn't money, it isn't a commodity, unless Bank A and Bank B both agree it is. You don't have anything unless there's a lot of people agreeing that it is. If it's value, not just me sees it, not just you sees it. Everyone has to see it, right? So the more people that they have agreed throughout the world that are market makers, that are central banks, that are enormous cornerstones to global economic growth, playing along with this game, they will be able to give the proper valuation of this coin XRP that will not be what the market cap is because that is a direct reflection of the retail speculator market, not the use case value. Liquidity, as I understand it at this point, will come ultimately to set the tone, to set a price, and then they can launch future products on top of it, and then call options when they want to launch those, and then ETFs when they want to launch those. And remember, we'll have overlapping oversight at that point, because the CFTC is the original referee on the field. But when they start launching third-tier, third-party projects like call options and ETFs, the SEC gets back into the game because those are considered securities. Look, I just wanted to lay this stuff out about liquidity and evaluation because the way I understand what Miguel Viez is saying in that ripple drop, it seems to me that the use of the liquidity by real businesses, he's saying, is where the new, where the liquidity comes from. And liquidity is value, access. You've got to be able to move value through XRP without necessarily affecting the price. Something to think about, guys. All right, leave some comments below. Hit the like and subscribe. Thank you all so much for everything you're doing and saying. Please share this on uh, Twitter with your friends. Uh, let's get a real community built here, guys. There's some really good stuff coming, and it just feels so good to be on the early side of it. So uh, thank you, everybody, and I'll talk to you next time.